character, our heritage, our lifestyle, everything we love about home. From the river to the lake, it's your town. And this is Town Talk. Hello and welcome back to Town Talk. I'm your host, Doris Rappold, and as promised, we have a lot of interesting things to talk about in this segment of the show. Um, the main thing that we wanted to talk about was Ella the elephant. And if you remember, or you think about it, Ella is the elephant, the sculpture, that made an appearance on Lentini, right near Yeni, right by two churches on, in that area. And it's white, and it looks like baby Ella. So we have Mama Ella and we have baby Ella. And we have a special guest joining Mr. Caro and me, and that would be Charles Marsala. Tell me, how did you first meet Charles? Charles, through one of the, the event that we did at the gallery, through uh, Rachel, which is one of the, the people in charge of the gallery, mm -hmm. the curators, and uh, she put me in contact with Charles and uh, it was kind of like when we, we talk about it, he mentioned what they were doing, and, uh, and I believe that it was, it was the right thing to do mm -hmm. uh, because this whole thing about poaching and, and the abuse that animals go in a daily basis sort of like all over the world, but in this case Africa with the elephants, is something that uh, so many people will think, you know, like, well, you know, we're here, they're over there, mm -hmm. we don't really going to make a difference. I don't think that's true. I think it's a, it's a, it's a whole world have to get together and, and make an effort and everybody has to. So he's tapped into the right person. Absolutely. Anna. Okay. And, and why, don't, why don't you just expound a little bit on what Hernan said about the great tuskers. Yes. Because I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like an elephant with, I, I didn't delineate elephants in, in different categories. Sure. So great tuskers uh, are, tus are elephants that have tusked over 100 pounds each and sometimes they're over six feet long. So We've been doing some research, and actually the numbers, are, I've recently thought there were more than 100, but I was corrected. There's less than 50, really. And they, the ivory is in such demand right now that, it, that America is actually the middleman. So we don't think of it as just an African problem. They just crushed six tons of ivory in Denver. That is, that's where they stockpile it and crushed it. So Hernan's work is letting us know that, that it's an American situation as well. And that, that's been a, a What do they do with it? Well, you know, we, um, we think of bracelets or just, uh, they, it's amazing, they carve elephants out of it to sell tourists to buy an elephant carved out of ivory to put on their mantle. The elephant should just keep it on its own stuff, you know? Oh, so you and said the so great tuskers, there are about how many left? You said 50? 50. And we, that's where we march as the great tuskers because they could, um, uh, you know, a piece of ivory that's six feet long is so rare, it's, it's worth $100,000. So the smuggling of that, trying to get that into America to have in someone's home as a piece of art is just, a, it's worth a lot. And, and the penalties are minor. So if you're going to smuggle in five of those, and that's a half million dollars, if you get caught, it's almost like a hunting violation. It's not a serious really? crime. And we're, as, as having been in politics, part of my effort was, why don't we just change this to a financial crime from a hunting violation? And, and Hernan, when he saw me, he said, you know, I want to be part of this. And... I said other people have done the same thing. So, so you told I think you mentioned to me too that as recent as three years ago or so, or that one of the great Tuskers yes. was killed. Satow. Um, who, oh, that's it. Yeah. Yes. Satow was poached two years ago in Kenya, and he was about fifty years old. He'd be like the Mike the Tiger of Kenya. Oh. He was the mascot of Kenya because he just had these phenomenal tusks, and when uh, he would try to hide because he he sensed that people wanted him for his tusk. And they were guards around him, but it's just really hard to protect a wild elephant because they could roam 20 miles. And he roamed away, and he got out of sight, and somebody shot him with a poison dart. And three days later, he, he died, and they cut off his tusk because they don't want to use guns so that the rangers hear the, hear the shots of the, the rifle. So they kill him with poison arrows and wait for them to die slowly with cyanide. Oh, that makes me sad. It, it is an unbelievable thing, and then sometimes that ivory ends up back in America. So, oh, that makes so, me sad. It, um, it, it, I will tell you, though, when you, now that you've related that story, I'm not going to look at this sculpture the same way. I'm going to see some real purpose, not just to throw up a piece of artwork, that there's a real purpose behind it. So it's really going to change the way I feel, and I hope it changes the way a lot of people feel who may be viewing 
the program. I, absolutely, and that um, I, I was really, really touched because uh, Mr. Shane. At one point, we were working on this stuff, and I was asking him some things. Can I do this? Can I do this? And um, we we're working through with, with Hernan and everything. And he sent out an email. He said, "The mission is too important." Do whatever you feel needs to be done to get the message out there. No, really. A very and, powerful email he sent. And I know that I, I see you brought with you this little color thing, but it's not just a color thing. What is, what is it for? Well, one of the things we're, our agenda for this year is Max Bernardi is a great graphic artist who's been doing environmental scenery. And we're looking to put together a book of sketches of endangered species animals. And she did this elephant as a, as a starter for us. So we've had this in restaurants where people can color it and uh, and have a little contest sometimes and promotions. We're also handing this out. We handed this out during Corpse de Napoleon. So it's a, it's a great little card for people to, to just grasp really quick what's going on. Right. Well, it is. It's really neat because it's color with a purpose. I mean, it's, it's informational. So um, I understand that um, you have a show that's upcoming. We, we do. And, and again, it, it's everybody's wanting to help. Uh, I happen to have, I used to be in the drum line at Jesuit. And the gentleman now, he, he runs WLAE, Ron Yeager. I ran into Ron one day and I said, we want to do a show like the old Mutual of Omaha Wild Kingdom. And he said, you get me the content, we'll make it happen. Excellent. So we're on WLAE uh, every other Friday night right now. And uh, the, uh, elephants is the topic we're coming up with. We just did rhinos. And we're going to do primates uh, in a month coming and up. And so when is the elephant show? The elephant show will be in um, February, uh, the, this Friday, this 5th. And the 19th. Okay. And they'll be, they'll be rebroadcasting those periodically. We also get films from a couple that was on Ellen recently, like this week, the Joberts, and we show a Jobert film after our show. Okay. And and WLAE for people who may not watch it on a regular basis is what channel? Channel 14. Channel 14. Okay. And and Hernan is actually going to be a, a guest on the show oh, in March. Oh, are Okay. Yeah. And in Mike March? Yenny. And what will you be talking about? Uh, I don't know. I hope it's art. <laughs> it's That's the only like, thing I know. <laughs> it's sort of like when you start out with a sculpture, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. I hope it's art, yeah. Well, no, yeah. Hernan actually started in Colombia doing stuff on the ocean. Yeah. And we do go and delve into his history a little bit on the show. Oh, that's yeah. great. That's yeah. great. And so it'll be maybe a little bit like what we're doing. Absolutely, yes. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, I just am so impressed with what you guys have put together here and how you got involved. And... Uh, and it makes me feel good that I'm a Kennerite, that I'm a, a citizen uh, of Kenner, Kenner, you know, uh, and, that, and that the stuff is here. I tell you, dealing with, with uh, Mike Jenny when he was in office, it was, I, 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 when we left the office, I was like, I can't believe it that we just have that meeting and then when everything starts rolling, the whole thing. He, he was almost as he good meant what, you when were. The first meeting, <laughs> guys yeah, were, yeah. our first we meeting, well he together. was like, we're going to do this thing happen. I'm going to put you with the right people because we have to do it the right way that... And I was like, okay, um, we'll see. And two weeks, a uh, month later, Charles told me, hey, we have a meeting. And, and everything went smooth. It was like, uh, uh, it was perfect. Well, Especially for me as an artist, because uh, I was telling early today that joke about the possum, you know. Yes. Like, I, when I get involved in too much uh, logistic and paperwork and all that stuff, I'm, I'm, I just play like a possum. You know, I just play dead. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I don't understand that. So, so they did all that work and everything worked out perfect. The city, the, the, the mayor was. We've already um, had the story yeah. covered internationally because one of the things that, like I said, Henry and Michael are working on is, is giving Kenner an identity right. with the art. And this it makes Kenner probably the first city in the world, really, to do a piece of art dedicated to vanishing species. That's really So cool. it was picked up, and the story ran in Europe, and it's getting some publicity for Kenner. Yeah, so it's London, a great thing. Yes. That, that is, that is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have that 2030 plan, yes. you know, so it's all fitting in together. Well, tell me, if people wanted to reach you guys, what would be the best way to reach you? And Alan, what about you? Uh, I guess the website would be the best way. So My just Google you? Dope. Yeah, Google. Okay. Yeah, so I've done enough. Okay, and um, I understand... To be on the Google search, you know. Yeah, it is. I, I found you. I found <laughs> okay. you. And then I have, I have a card that you gave me. I think it's ernancadro.com. That's yes. pretty easy. Yeah. So yeah. that's pre pretty easy to reach you. I understand you have an, ex an exhibit coming up. Yeah, actually three shows. This semester is going to be pretty busy for me, which I kind of like it. I like mm -hmm. it a lot. Uh, we have a gallery on... Gallery Ayo is on 1800 block of uh, Magazine Street. We're going to be do a show over there for three months, okay. uh, starting April. Uh, then we have Ario Dante on Julia Street, 500 block of Julia Street. Uh, we're doing that for May. And between April and May, we're doing uh, 
Keswick in the French Quarter. So I'm going to be in three, yeah, it's going to be three locations. Three that uh, what I like about it is that is they all three are like in the focal point of art uh, through the city, which is uh, the French Quarter, the the Art District, uh, Magazine Street, which is like full well, with you galleries be a and busy store. Man. Yeah, yeah. Looking yeah. forward to it. Don't forget, you got to pick the kids up from school. Yeah. <laughs> okay, don't forget. <laughs> I wanted to ask you too, Charles, how would people get so, more information so we, on AWE? We, um, our website is AWE News, A-W-E dot news, and we have a YouTube channel called AWE News. And we have a great videographer, Joey, Harm, uh, Joey Harmon. I get her on sometimes when I get nervous on TV. <laughs> but Joey Harmon does a great job, and we've actually already done a, a piece on Hernan in his studio and showing the, the work really? that he's done around New Orleans. He's got great work at the Botanical Garden up and on St. Charles Avenue. So if you watch that, there's about a four minute video of Hernan on our YouTube channel. Yeah, well, and also uh, Joey did the, when well, we I were doing the, the sculpture, when, when I was making the, the sculpture. Oh, really? He went yeah. a couple of days over there and spent the whole day filming, doing all the bending and welding. He, he's and doing some thing, great so. work of, of documenting and all the wild people we interview. We often go out in the field and do like a field interview mm -hmm. to supplement B roll. For the interviews. Now you're you're not from here. I am. I, I grew up in Metairie, and then I, I got uh, studied engineering at Tulane and went out to California for 30 years, and then I came back. And uh, so uh, it's been great getting. Are you back for good? I think it's uh, probably, but oh, uh, sorry. I sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you you know, I've been question. here. I've been here back for two years, and uh, I still miss Silicon Valley at times. But uh, you know, New Orleans has got uh, many people come back. As they say, do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I saw a little thing the other day. Um, there was a program on TV, and the guy had a hat on, and it said, take a bite out of Silicon Valley. <laughs> really neat, you know? So it, it sounded, and he made it sound like a great place to be. And I'm trying to set up, uh, between some of the venture capitalists in Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and the people here, mm -hmm. contacts to help entrepreneurs have access to capital from Silicon Valley right now. Well, I want to thank both of you guys for coming. And Charles, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Ernan, I, like I, I feel like I'm in the presence of greatness. Oh, <laughs> what to say? <laughs> thank you so much no, no. for coming. Really appreciate My it. And really enjoyed folks, it. I'm yeah. telling you, I don't think I, for me, I don't think I'll ever ride past this sculpture without thinking about the great Tuskers and, and thinking about the purpose behind the sculpture. So don't be too quick to judge and say, I don't understand that. I think it's ugly. Take a little while to open your mind a little bit and, and try to put some, think about the meaning that could be behind some of these sculptures. And we are indeed happy that they are in Kenner and that we are receiving the notoriety that we deserve for becoming a, such a cultural district. So we are so happy to have you again. Thank you so much. Please come back next time on Town Talk when there'll be something of interest for all of you in Kenner. Subscribe to Awe News. We've interviewed numerous people, artists, legislators, people operating sanctuaries, activists who are working hard to save vanishing species. Get involved.